Howdy everybody, Sagebrush Bob. The last time I was out here to do the video for the uh, the little park down there, you know, the breakfast with a friend video, I stopped by the side of the road here and I saw this cliff. And I started wondering, why is that here? Because what I'm looking at shouldn't be here. What this is, is a, a hill full of volcanic ash. We look right at it here, all that hand colored stuff with the rocks in it. If we get a close up here, you see that this is all like sand stuff with little rocks embedded in it. What this is, this is volcanic ash, and it's the result of what's called a pyroclastic flow. A pyroclastic flow is when a volcano erupts, and we've all seen pictures of it where the volcano erupts and this gigantic cloud rises up, and then everything kind of slumps down and falls back down and goes down the slopes of the, of the crater, or down the slopes of the mountain, and just sweeps everything in its path. That flow of ash down the side of the mountain is called pyroclastic flow. And it's very, very hot, well over a thousand degrees centigrade, and it just destroys everything in its path. And it, over time, afterward, that volcanic ash and all the little debris that's in it gets crushed back down by the weight of the stuff on top of it and it get, turns into rock again, like this. This little conglomeration of stuff that looks kind of like a low-grade cement with rocks in it. But it's really, it's soft, easy to break. This isn't really rock, it's basically dirt, dust. And it's been cemented together by pressure and time. What that tells me is that there's a volcano here. Duh, that's obvious. I mean, we've got all this volcanic ash. It's got to come from somewhere. But where? We're out here in the open desert. There is no volcanoes out here, none that I can see. So where are they? Well, Let's do a little research. Let's go find out. Yeah, in the last segment of the video, you'll notice that the camera was moving. The wind is so bad out here right now that it won't even hold, keep the tripod upright. It keeps wanting to tip over. So I'm just going to do this little next segment right here in the truck. It's a whole lot safer, I think. Let's do a little history. Like I said, when I was out here last time, I ran into this white rock that's out on that side of me right now, about 100 yards away, where I was just doing the last segment of the video. And I was wondering, where did that come from? It's really something I should have known. I've lived in this area most of my adult life and I never knew this. But according to the U.S. Geodetic Survey, where I'm at right now and where you're at, because you're with me, is in directly in the center of a volcano. I didn't know that. It's, but the catch to it is, it's not the kind of a volcano you think it is. It's what they call a resurgent caldera. We all think of volcanoes being the, you know, the, the cone-shaped mountain with the hole in the top and the volcanic stuff comes out the top. Uh, like, like Mount St. Helens or Mount Rainier or Mount Hood. But those are actually relatively minor volcanoes. The really bad ones, the ones that are big, huge, monstrous volcanoes, are calderas. 
A caldera is a volcano that is so big and so explosive that when it goes off, the, the volcanic ash and the lava and everything doesn't come out of the top. It comes out of the sides like this and comes up with the sides and blows the sides out of the, the top of the volcano. And it's so explosive and so fast that you get massive explosions, massive ash, you know, massive lava flows. And immediately what happens is the under part of the volcano the part where the magma chamber that has all that lava is at empties itself really fast. It empties itself so fast that what's up on top of it, the upper part of the volcano, has no support underneath. And what happens is after the major explosion, the top of the volcano, everything that's up here, just has nothing to support it and it collapses downward and falls into the inside of the volcano. And what that leaves is a shallow volcano with stuff filling up the inside and in this case this volcano is so big that as long as I've lived here I never knew it was here because from where I'm at and where you're at you can't really see it it's too big so what I'm gonna do in this video is and I'll probably mention this because I filmed other segments earlier. What we're going to do is I'm going to put latitude and longitude coordinates up here on the screen. And what we'll do is I just want you to um, call up Google Earth and keep it running in the background while you watch this video. And when I stop along the way to explain something or show you something, I'll put the video, the coordinates up, and you can follow along with Google Earth and see it from up above. This volcano that I, we're sitting in right now is so big that you literally can't see it all from the ground. You can get hints of it, but the only way you can really see it is to look at it from up above, from 50,000 feet, or from space in the case of Google Earth. It's that big. And I never would have known it if that I hadn't seen that little white hill and those rocks and wondered, how did that get here? So over the course of the next few minutes, I'll take you from the beginning, you know, from outside the crater, what it looks like, gives you a little hint, and we'll go through it. And I'm on my way next to a, a point where we can overlook a large part of the crater. About half of it is all we'll be able to see. And uh, if the wind isn't blowing too bad, I'll give you a view from up there. But mm, yeah, who knows? Believe it or not, this is the third attempt I've done to come out here and do this video. And I was blown out by the wind two times already. So we'll see what happens. Hopefully we'll get it all done today. The weather is actually pretty nice if the wind will just stay down. So hang on, folks. We'll go for a ride. Well, here we are. We're actually just out of town. We're standing by the side of the road. And let's see, go across the road here. What I really wanted to show you is the skyline. This is going to be our first clue. Let me uh, turn the camera around so you don't have to look at me and I'll try and point out what I want you to see here. Okay. What I want to do here is I'll use my hammer to point. Let's look at the skyline here. Notice the nice rounded foothills and then they stop here and then they get really bumpy 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 all the way across here and then from that point they're nice and smooth again on out as far as you can see 
clear out to the horizon. This area right here, the bumpy part from here to down here or across there, this little area right here, that's what we're interested in. If you look at that, that is our first clue that there's something out there that shouldn't be. So, we were looking for a volcano. And once you know what you're looking for, there's the evidence. It's right there in front of us. It starts here, and this right there where it comes down off that nice round hill, goes through the bumpy part, and it stops right there, where it comes back up to the mesa again. So that area, the bumpy part, that's the crater of our volcano. And if you're just driving by and looking, you would think that that's normal. You wouldn't even notice the difference. So that's clue number one. Next thing we're going to do is go further down the road and I'll get us closer to it and give you a close-up view. And that should be a little more descriptive of what we want to go I for. Where I was when I took that first horizon video and we're going to turn around here and look this way. And I'll bring the camera around so you can just look at that and nod at me. If we look at this, again, we get closer now so it should be easier to spot. Look at the horizon line. Follow the nice round horizon line and about there it starts getting bumpy. Bumpy, bumpy, bumpy all the way across to there and then it goes back to being nice and round again. So this area is what we're concerned with, this bumpy area right in here. From down there to about that point, across here to that point. That distance is the width of our crater. And it's a big one. Okay, here we are. We're at the entrance to the crater. I'll just point a few things out for you. Let's see, where's my finger at? Right there, this hillside right here. Follow it along. And we'll follow it around to this right here. You can see there's a little hill. Goes out here. Right there, comes up, goes over around and then back. Back here, about halfway up that hillside, if you follow it, there's a, some dark rock sticking up like this, about halfway up. As we follow that around, as far as you can see, there's that black rock sticking up about halfway up the hillside. That's the rim of the crater. So where we're at, we're at the far north end. And what you're looking at there, that's the west wall of the crater, about halfway up that far hillside. And it goes from here, down that direction, as far as you can see, long ways. So if you can't see the crater yet, don't feel bad. <laughs> I couldn't see it either until I started doing some research and studying the pictures and the aerial photographs. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drive down here about another half or three quarters of a mile, so we're well inside the crater, and then turn around and look back and you'll see it a lot easier from the inside. So stand by, we'll make the trip and we'll come back. Well, here we are. We're about three quarters of a mile inside the crater now. And I'll bring you around so that you can see where we were. Let me move the camera here. Okay. Look down there. See? Right down there where those that two RVs were at. We were just past that. So I was looking into the crater. Let's look over here where that hillside was. Here you have a much better view of it. Right here. It goes, starts there, goes 
goes up, over, and down. And then this is where the wall collapses across this area here. And then over here to this hill that I was pointing at the backside of before that you couldn't really see where it was running over to the west. This is the very looking due north. That's the north rim of the crater right there. And you follow it on around. And it goes up behind this hill. This is all ash and some other stuff. All that dark brown stuff in the distance, that's and the white on top of it, that's all volcanic ash. It's all part of the crater. And we follow it around. And you look on this far hillside, halfway up, you see a ridge of dark brown rock sticking up like that in different spots around there. And you follow that all the way around. That's the rim of the crater. We follow that, follow it, follow it, off into the distance. All of this is the rim of the crater, and it goes down that direction as far as you can see. We're at the far north end of this crater. This crater is eight miles long, so that direction, eight miles away, is the south wall. Okay, so that gives you an idea of what we're looking at. These little hills here, all these little hills here, that's all internal. It's inside the crater. This is all part of the leftovers after the crater collapsed in on itself. And the next stop, we're going to move further down the road, about another two miles in that direction. And stop and we'll have a look around. And hopefully, that will put us almost in the middle of the crater. We'll see when we get there. Okay, we stopped again a couple of miles further down the road. I'm hoping that this spot where we're at now is pretty much the center of the volcanic crater. Um, I know that it's going to be hard for you to see with my head in the way, but what we have down here, this is the southern wall of the crater. So I'll uh, move the camera so my head's out of the way and, and show you hopefully a better picture of what the, the crater is actually looking like. Uh, like I said, where we're standing here is pretty close to being in the middle of the crater. Move the camera here. Okay. Very, about halfway up the hill there, you see those dark colored rocks that are sticking up, like right there. Uh, all those rocks sticking up, about halfway up, as long as you go, right there, all the way along. That's the rim of the crater. Until we get over here, then that far wall, that tall one, that's the see of a rock comes up there. About halfway up, that's the rim of the crater. And we keep following that around. That's the southern wall of the crater. Looking around toward the southeast, you can still see the dark colored rock. And there's the wall of the crater there. More of the rim of the crater. And around. And then there's all these hills here that are inside the crater. There's some more of the rim of the crater right there. More stuff on the inside. A little dark spot there on that hill. That's more of the rim. And out there, beyond these little hills, because these are all inside the crater, is the outside rim. Big, big, big. This, uh, according to uh, the U.S. Geodetic Survey, and by the way, this is called uh, Three Fingers Caldera. U.S. Geodetic Survey says it's eight miles long north to south and six miles wide. So this is looking north. So about a mile or so beyond where those hills are at is the rim of the crater. We'll swing around here to the west. That's the western rim. It's kind of a long oval shape, 
So there's the western rim. Swing back around some more. That's the southern rim. It's still about three miles away. And we'll come around here. That's southeast, southeast, and that's east. Look at that far rim over there with the rock sticking up. That's the eastern edge of the crater. So that little spot over there between these humps, that's the low spot of the crater. It's the lowest place. I'm going to go on down the road about two miles and there uh, is an observation point down there we can drive up and get a look at it from up above and give you kind of an idea how big this really is. Okay, we're off. Okay, the wind's blowing so hard that I can't trust the tripod. It's already fallen over once. <laughs> And when I try to talk in front of the camera, all you get is wind noise. So I'm going to do it with just the camera here, as close to it as I can get. And hopefully we'll get some good footage of it. We're at that little obs observation point, And I'm putting on, up here in front of the screen, I'll put the coordinates for that. It's just a little hill that's toward the south end of the crater. Right now I'm looking northeast. What we're going to do is we look around here to the left. You can see out here in front of us the floor of the volcano. All that white stuff is volcanic ash. All that tan colored stuff over there is all volcanic ash. Come over here, this whole hillside, all of that is volcanic ash. So I'll start here at the north and give you the panoramic view. Straight ahead, you can see out here that those far hills, that's the north rim of the crater, north and east, that brown rock rim. As we go around, those far hills in the distance, those little points, that's the far north end. And then we come over here, these other hills, these ones in front of us, those are internal. Behind those you can see the tops of the rim where that brown rock is sticking up. And we go around here past where this ash hill is at and look up. And we're probably going to face into the wind now and get noise, but we can see the rim of the crater, all that brown rock is basaltic lava. Let me get around in front of the truck. And we continue looking. And this is the south end of the crater where you see these rocks. And there's a little break in the crater wall. In the last video you saw that, that was the notch in the canyon that we were going into to go to the park. It's about six miles up that road into that notch. So we continue on around the south side. There's the southeast rim. And the hill here that's within the crater. And that shadowed area on the other side of the hill there, that's the far east side. Okay, we're back in the truck out of the wind now. Let's think about it about, I just mentioned that this is about 45 to 48 square miles, one volcano, immensely huge. We all know about the Mount St. Helens volcano, the caldera on that volcano is just over one mile across, about in a circle, maybe, oh, about two and a half square miles. This is almost 20 times larger than Mount St. Helens. To put it into another perspective, the largest surface burst atomic weapon ever ever created, surface burst, was about 15 megatons. It was called Castle Bravo in 1954. That left a crater 1.2 miles across, slightly bigger than Mount St. Helens. 
Again, this crater that we're in is about 20 times larger than that. Now we're not talking the Tsar bomb that came along by the, with the, from the Russians a year or two later. That was an airburst, so it didn't leave a crater that would have been quite as big as it if it had been a ground burst, so we can't count that. The Castle Bravo test was the biggest one that was ever done on the surface. And again, it left a crater one and a quarter miles across. If we want to go a little further, in August of 1883, uh, the island of Krakatoa between Java and Sumatra exploded as a giant volcano. It literally blew the island apart. It was the loud, loudest noise ever heard by man. They could hear it over 2,000 miles away when it went off. The shock wave traveled around the world on seismographs seven times. It was that big. Unbelievably huge volcanic explosion. The caldera left by that volcano is approximately three and a half miles wide and six miles long. Roughly half the size of this one. 15 million years ago, when this went up, this must have been a very exciting place to be. I don't think I would have wanted to have been here. The volcano chain, basically, if you want to call it that, that this was produced from was actually the Yellowstone hotspot. We're all familiar with the volcano that's under Yellowstone National Park. Uh, 17 or 18 million years ago, that volcano was underneath the southeast Oregon. And what happened was when it was under southeast Oregon back then, it's the top of the, the magma chamber that held that holds that hot spot spread out like this and started pushing up against the crust. It spread out till it was right in the neighborhood of 100, 120 miles across and kept pushing upward. And wherever it cracked the crust, the volcano came out. This is one of those spots. And what happened was the Yellowstone hot spots here, we're sitting on top of it, North American plate, and the volcanoes came through. And over time, the North American plate moved. The volcano stayed in the same spot. But we moved on top of it. So what you see, there's a chain of volcanoes where that thing, where the continent has moved over top of it over the last 15 million years or so. Scary thing, this volcano that we're in, this is the small one. The one that's uh, where the original hotspot was down on the border is about twice as big as this one. Isn't nature wonderful? You know, this is just awe-inspiring to be here and look at this and finally after 40 years of driving in and out here I recognize what this place is now and I was blind <laughs> all these years I've been in and out here and I never noticed the entire picture so now I know and I'm all excited I want to go find more volcanoes so stick with me folks we're gonna go hunting for other volcanoes and other things I promised history and a little bit of geology and adventure in the outdoors of the high desert, so this is part of it. We'll see if we can find some other volcanoes. We'll find, oh, some historic spots. Several of those I'm planning on going to. And in the not too distant future, maybe some other little things like, you know, if, you, if you're tired of cooking in the outdoors with things like uh, freeze-dried food, <laughs> MREs. If you want to do real food outdoors, I'm going to do a couple of videos on things like uh, how to bake stuff in the bush. Bush baking. It'll be interesting. So stick with it, folks. There'll be more coming. Oh, and before I go, I'd also like to say thank you, all of you guys that came over to my channel from Neanderthal62. Thanks a million. I, you don't know how much I appreciate having all you people come over. And it was a total surprise because I had been gone for a few days, almost a week, when uh, Neanderthal62 put up that video asking you to come over and view my channel. 
So when I came back off of vacation, uh, my inbox was pretty much full to the seams. There was a gazillion people that had come on and appreciated the channel and subscribed to it. It all came to me as a big shock. So thanks, everybody. I hope I'll make it worth your while, and I'll see you out there. Oh, as Steve Jobs used to say, there is just one more thing right over here. Here's something different I saw while I was filming the other video. See all this light colored stuff? This is that volcanic ash I was telling you about that got me the idea to go looking for that volcano. Here's something I just noticed on this pile of volcanic ash. If we look up here, up above, see that dark colored stuff up there? That dark colored stuff doesn't belong there. This is all volcanic ash. That top three feet or so is sand. And it's full of nice round rocks. Full of nice round rocks like this. So if you're looking at land and you got a layer of sand on it with round rocks on it, these rocks have been tumbled. That means these were these are river rocks. They were dropped here by water. Now last I knew the nearest river is about seven miles away and several hundred feet lower than this. So that raises the question, how did this get here? Let's go find out.